Okay, so look what I've got today, and look where I am today. <laughs> the wind's just picking up a little bit, but it's sort of just early evening, uh, end of September in the Highlands of Scotland. Absolutely gorgeous time to come on out, and I was hoping the wind was going to drop right down, but I'm not convinced. Got a nice little uh, boat here, uh, cool looking thing, um, really sort of nice and lightweight. Um, comes with a stand as well, run through all the bits and pieces, uh, and I'll put specs and everything down in description as per normal. Really nice, slick looking boat, uh, it does look nice. I um, noticed the um, Sort of deflection on the prop shaft there obviously um, got a flexible uh, shaft there um, but I've, I've not had one like this before and I've not had a boat this big either uh, this is quite a, quite a reasonable size I would say I think it's about 700 millimeters end to end but I'll put the spec like I say uh, down in description for you pop the uh, top off and then everything is nicely put in everything is velcroed in we've got a 40 amp um, brushless ESC there and obviously a brushless motor here and as you can clearly see it's a D354 uh, 1800 kV and uh, that should <laughs> give us quite a bit of go actually. Uh, the battery is 2600 I think and it's a 3 cell and it's a, it is a bit of a fiddle to get in and out uh, but they've stuck things down the side so all the weight is nicely nicely either side so it's not sat on the top to sort of flip it over or anything. Water cooled through the motor and also water cooled through the ESC as well. In there. We'll just pop that out for you so you can have, just have a quick look just in case I don't get it back or anything. <laughs> There we go. So yeah, it's got one nicely done. It's I think it's probably been apart and then restuck together by the looks of it. It's cer certainly all waterproofed and everything, and uh, it does look quite quite nicely done. Everything looks pretty good, uh, and then obviously your uh, receivers stuck down here at the back. Uh, normal sort of servo, sort of unmarked and everything as per normal. Uh, and I did did give it a quick try at home, make sure it just fired up and everything. And the firing up procedure is not the way they say it. Now normally you always turn the transmitter on first of all, then turn either your quad or your car or your boat, um, plug it in and fire it up. This one will not bind, will not do anything. You just constantly get a flashing light if you try that. Um, so you have to actually plug the boat in first of all, so it's live, uh, and then you actually uh, turn the transmitter on and then it binds immediately. And I've not found another way around that, so uh, I did try that out at home. And this one will run out of the water. Actually, I'll, I'll actually show you that little quick setup now. So if I do the normal way, so on with the transmitter, and you see we've got a little flashing LED and it's gone beep, ready to roll. And if I plug the boat in, you see everything's kicking up. And hopefully down in there you can see there's a little flashing LED on the actual uh, receiver there and yeah it, it's not going to bind it's not going to yeah it, nothing happens it sounds as though it's going to and it doesn't so the only way to do it is to turn off the transmitter and then if I turn it back on there we go the LED has stopped flashing there <laughs> Oh, it seems to have it. It's got a really nice. I play with this indoors, like I say. You sort of kick it a bit and you get a wee bit, and then once you actually get it, all of a sudden you get a real nice bit of power. It's very smooth, um, uh, proportional steering as well. Uh, it does seem quite nicely set up, actually, sort of all ready to roll. So I'm going to pop that in. And like I say, most, unfortunately, most of my shooting is going to be into the sun, which doesn't happen in the Highlands of Scotland very often. So in one way, I'm really pleased. Another way, it might muck up the footage. Uh, and the other thing we've got is uh, I can do a little bit down there, but not an awful lot because there's some old reeds kicking around as well, sort of thing. So I'm just going to see how we get on. So this is literally the first time it's been in the water. I'm getting soaked. <laughs> You as that thing goes. Yeah, she's just starting to get up on the plane now. There she goes. And I think you can run this on 4S as well. This is 3S. There's no reverse on this one, which this is the first boat I've had without a reverse. Actually, she needs a bit of trimming as well, so steering trimmers. That's better. 
Gee, where she goes some? Range, no problem at all. She turns really fast. Good. Really try and hammer it around. There we go. Just gonna bring her in. I just wonder how she's getting on with water. Whether she's got any on board. <laughs> My little boats that I'm used to, it looks more like a blinking ferry, this thing. <laughs> so this front end, this is the ones we use around the islands in the, in the highlands of Scotland. So, uh, let's, I'll open it first of all, let's just have a look and see what we've got. No, absolutely nothing in there at all. We'll have to get minimal amount, so that's really good going. Yeah, nice. Now, I just wonder what happens if she does get inverted. I'm not too sure what would... Yeah, no, she can. Yeah, she's not going to flick back over, I don't think. This is the this is the thing. I'm used to pumping it on the throttle, and then I can use the torque of the engine to flip them back over. But this one's not going to do anything. So if she goes over, you've got to go and get her. Yep. Yes. <laughs> you have been warned. <laughs> Another reason why I've done it with the wind coming towards me is that if it does get stuck out there, it will just eventually get blown back in here, sort of thing. Still wants a bit of steering trim on. Oh no, she ah, she did flip over there. So what we've got to do now is just wait for her to blow back in. Oh, ho, ho. time for some time lapse, I think. <laughs> See whether or not she's let any water in now. Where she's been upside down and got that option. There's a tiny bit in the back there. Yeah, not a lot to be honest. I've had boats with worth. There's a little bung here that you can pull out and then let it all make its way out. Okay, it's slowing down now, definitely at full power and she's not she's not really going anymore. I'm going to keep her in reasonably close to see what happens when we run it out. Oh no, definitely l no power at all. That's on full throttle. Well, you do get a fair old warning with it though. There's no bleeper or anything as far as I know. You would just get sort of the heads up that your actual power is virtually out. So even, even at this power, she, you, you could come back quite a fair old way. I'll just let her go there. I know the wind will blow her back in anyway. Yeah, yeah absolutely no warning of that. It's just purely uh, uh, the way it warns you is it just winds up going this slow sort of thing at full, full throttle. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Right you, I'm absolutely soaked. <laughs> oh, just to give me another shattering. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's see how much water we got on board now. Oh, next to nothing really. I will pop the bung out so you can just have a look. But when it's inverted and it was bobbing along, it took, did take quite a while to get back. There was a, quite a lot of water in there every time. But I think that's purely, there we go, that's all we got. Let's see if it's... Yeah, that's not really much. I thought I would just show you what we go through when we review and look up. Absolutely mullet. <laughs> totally soaked. These were light grey trousers. You might get a little bit more view there. Uh, yeah, and because it splashed it up and it's gone straight down in my wellies as well. Ah, oh, bless.
get off of that load of fun. It's brilliant. Just so I'd show you, that even if you run the battery right down like I did, uh, and it still had more go in it, it would have still kept going a little bit, uh, but you could certainly get it back to base, which is good. Uh, it's only come down to 3.4, which is not a dangerous level on the battery. If you get down right towards 3, then you could actually damage your LiPo. There we go, typical Scotland for you. I literally put everything out here to film it, and it wound up with everything getting soaked, as you can see downpour and then beautiful sunshine again so typical scotland uh, now this is what i normally run i just thought i'd show you that um it's a normal sort of monohull um good fun ready to race sort of thing ready to run and this is exactly the same ready to run as well uh, but this one uh, i've got a mate who's into the boats a bit more uh, and been doing them a lot longer and he says this one is sort of upgradable uh, moddable uh, you can play around with different things with it you move the weight back and forwards uh, and there's a few bits and pieces that uh, you could do with it to make it even faster and even better sort of thing so but if you want just something ready to run this also does that as well so this this is sort of aimed across across the market but if you want to move up this basically is as it is and enjoy it as it is and that's all you need to do by the way i've done a full review on this and i put a link down in the description because this is a load of fun as well Okay, onto the actual uh, boat itself. Uh, as you can see, we've got the twin hull and we've got three different uh, uh, planing uh, surfaces there. Uh, and so when she starts to lift up, you get a little cushion of air under there and that's gonna make it really work. And that's why we don't get the drag of the water as she gets a real shift on. Like a uh, mate sort of pointed out to me, you, you undo these screws here and you can move the prop up and down because you've got a flexible prop shaft there. Uh, so that's really good. Um, so he says for sort of creating trim and yeah, he's way more advanced than I am on this sort of thing, but I just sort of share his knowledge with you. Uh, I did have a couple of quite big bashes with it because uh, I was trying to bring it in close for the camera and there's seriously not a mark on it, no issues whatsoever. And when it was inverted, it sits about here in the water bobbing along. And I think that's why we wound up with the amount of water we did in there. When I did runs out on it and I didn't uh, get it inverted, basically it didn't flip over uh, and I just ran it back in, there was hardly anything in there at all. It was a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, which is, uh, you know, it happens on all the boats. Somehow or other the water finds its way in. Popping it open and having another look inside. Uh, he pointed out that it was... Uh, this is a good uh, coupling here. It's a collet style one. Um, so instead of a little grub screw in there that holds it in. And also uh, he'd seen reviews on this one where there was problems with the tubing and that. And I've had no issues with this at all. I, I didn't realize that. Uh, and it absolutely works fine. Basically it sucks the water in at the back end here and it's uh, cut at a, a chamfer there. So it sort of pushes it in there, scooshes around up into the uh, ESC up through the motor and then out the front here so it just just is cooling down everything as we go along uh, like i say he said there's bits on here that some people would upgrade and also start to put like two 2s batteries in series which will give you the 4s power uh, it actually comes with a 3s battery as i said when we were out on the lock um, and this gate was giving me about eight minutes uh, run time uh, you can put a single 4s on in there but he was saying you know most people would then be starting to move things around and put a battery either side to balance the weight and everything um, i'm quite happy with running it as it is i might put a 4s on it because i just like to see how it goes and then some, then you would have to alter it for the trim to get it up on uh, on the plane in surfaces so that's that's, that's when it, he started to get all technical on me and I, I started to lose it a bit then. One bit he did point out was if this comes apart when you're actually out on the loch, um, it will sink, it will get watered and then sink and most people would put some sort of flotation stuff in there, whatever you're going to use, just to keep it up so it would bob back into you or you could send another boat out and push it back in. Saying about the battery, you do get a battery charger with it. It's one of these really sort of simple ones. Uh, charges through the balance charger port and it will take about four hours to charge this battery up and there is room in the battery bay area to put larger batteries in uh, if you wanted to so you could put much bigger batteries and get much longer run, run times and like i say i was getting about seven minutes um, seven minutes or so run time with it I would suggest you go for something like this. If you're going to get into it and you're going to start using batteries like this, you really want a reasonable charger. And this is a hobby grade charger. I've done a full review on it and I'll put a link down in the description. And you can run it off your car or uh, off a mains as well. And it charges virtually everything. Um, and it could charge several batteries at once. So, so you've got a huge advantage there. And it will pop the power into that within the hour. So. 
the instruction manual is pretty good um, it's it runs through everything and there's loads of stuff at the back for uh, troubleshooting which is really nice uh, and it also tells you about lubrication how to look after your boat as well the one thing it has got wrong and I pointed out when we we're at the lock is that it tells you to turn on the transmitter first of all which is the normal way and then to turn on the boat and it just will not bind like that uh, I played around with it a bit but it doesn't do it all you have to do is put the boat on first then turn this on it auto binds and away you go the transmitter is nice just a normal one quite a basic one uh, we've got throttle so you just give it some throttle it spin obviously and go forward and when you let go there's no stop and there's no reverse with it so the boat will just coast to a, a stop you've got re your reverse switches here um, you've got a 70, 30 and 50, 50 on here as well and leave it in the 70, 30. That was its default and your on off switches on the back here. You've got a little flat LED there waiting to bind. You've got your trim switches on the top here and they just click either way. And yeah, it's, it's quite nice, got a nice little bit of feel to it. It, it, it works fine for, for this. I ran it out over 100 metres and the boat starts to get quite small, but they do give it that it will run out to 300 metres. I, I just don't see any sense in that because it's no fun. You can't really see how much turn you're doing and everything. Uh, perhaps if you put an FPV on it or something. But um, for me, you know, I'm sure it will do that sort of distance across a clear lock. It would be absolutely no problem at all. Oh, by the way, locks in Scotland are basically lakes in every other country around the world. Uh, you've got a pot up at the top here which alters the uh, what sort of speed rate you're going to get. Uh, but it doesn't actually work it's disconnected so yeah and this does take four double a batteries as well uh, the stand is good as well just uh, pop that together and it's really handy it just keeps that uh, the uh, rudder and also the prop up off the ground so you're not going to do any sort of damage and you can do any little sort of tweaks or anything you want to do so i've really had a blast with it i hope you've enjoyed it um, uh, the sun's back out and there's no wind today so i'm going to go out and have a bit more of a play hope you enjoy this and i look forward to seeing you on the next one mm -hmm.